Welcome back, everyone. Now, it's the cold case that's been dubbed one of the worst miscarriages of justice in Australia's history. A man presumed dead, his wife jailed for murder, but little proof she actually did it. Now, after a decade of speculation, a new book is uncovering a new theory about what really happened to Bob Chappell. The Four Winds. Bob Chappell was last seen on his boat in Hobart on the 26th of January 2009. Mr Chappell remains missing despite extensive police searches. A day later, police discovered the boat empty. But the next day finds the boat half submerged. Bob inexplicably gone. Chappell's partner, Sue Neil Fraser, was arrested in August, found guilty and sentenced to 23 years in jail. Police yesterday charged Susan Neil Fraser with the murder of her partner, Bob Chappell. But with no body, no witnesses, no motive and unexplained evidence, many believe Sue is innocent of all charges. It's certainly abhorrent to think that a person would be in jail for something that they may not have done. Including former detective and author Colin McLaren, whose latest book is dedicated to solving the case once and for all. Yeah, the book is titled Southern Justice and Colin joins us from Melbourne this morning. Thank you for joining us, sir. You've been involved with this case for three years now. What, what first drew you to it? I guess it was the classic damsel in distress, Richard. Uh, it was, it was very simple to get yourself hooked into this case. Although I was busy at the time, I kept getting dragged in. The more I scratched on the surface, the more I worried about what really went on with the investigation and how flawed it was, and how this woman was actually jailed for just telling a couple of lies, and an extraordinary, almost a fantastic story by a Crown witness, and that's about it. And this woman's been in jail 10 years now, Richard. Now, you and another detective, Charles Bazina, have teamed mm. up to reinvestigate the case, Colin. What have you found? Well, Charlie Bazina is one of the great homicide detectives of Australia, and I've got a, a strong task force background. And what we did is methodically went through everything, independently of each other, so we were objective. And what happened then was we, f we come out with the same s scenario, how the body was removed, which couldn't possibly be by Sue Neil Fraser with her physicality, and also the whole crime scene area and the avenues of inquiries that should have been um, undertaken by this team of detectives were all missed and, and that included suspects or at least persons of interest that live nearby. They were, they were homeless or drug users or thieves that congregated on the shoreline immediately overlooking the yacht and there had been a whole series of burglaries on the yachts including that night and this information was hidden from the trial and it was, wasn't um, followed through properly, as you'd expect, from the detectives. They grabbed Sue from the start, the classic sort of domestic homicide scenario, and she was it from the very, very beginning. Yeah, this project for you hasn't been without its risks. In, in the book, you reveal you actually had to flee the country because you feared for your safety while looking into this case. That must have, must have been terrifying. It was, Richard. I, I've not faced this any any uh, level over the last 30 or 40 years in my career associated with criminal investigations. And I've inv uh, been involved with uh, the Mafia for three years. This one really worries me. And each time we got closer to trying to understand what might have gone on, each time we, we come up with what we thought was an independent and also qualified a view on the death of Bob Chappell, which has nothing to do with Sunil Fraser, there was media releases by the authorities in Tasmania that I may be charged. I may be perverting their course of justice. Perhaps I was. But my course of justice, which I've trained in, certainly showed all sorts of problems. And Charlie Bazina, he agreed with that. So we united. But I, I just could not write this manuscript. It was impossible with the pressure. So I had to leave overseas. And I went for 12 months to, to put this book out to make sure this story is told. It's shocking. According to original investigations, uh, Bob wasn't alone on the, on the boat that night. Sorry. Bob was alone on the boat that night. But you say that that might not be true, Colin. Well, there's no doubt, if you believe in medical science, Sonia, DNA, which is extraordinary, it's powerful stuff, then there's this big puddle, about the size of a dinner plate, of DNA on the yacht. Now, that size DNA is almost unheard of at a crime scene. So who owns this puddle of DNA? And it, was come, it came up to a, a, a homeless girl that was running uh, with thieves and breaking in and out of buildings, and, and there was also yachts involved with her boyfriend, etc. And they were running rampant 
at that particular time. She's now an adult woman. And, she, and I got to meet her and befriend her and tr try to establish a rapport. And slowly she told me that she was on the yacht that night with two males and something went horribly wrong. Sue had nothing to do with it. She also bizarrely last week came to Melbourne. She wanted to keep talking. I excused myself because I had to go to the Supreme Court on this matter and give my evidence. I excused myself, but Charlie Bazina then facilitated an interview with um, a medical, a medico that was very, um, had a close relationship with this girl. And she again last week said she was on the yacht and she signed, it, or she wrote in her own hand, a short statement to say she was on the yacht. So why is it so hard? Why, why can't the authorities say, whoops, perhaps we got it wrong? Mm. Colin, let's cut to the chase, and we're running out of time, sadly, but tell us what you reckon happened. I think there's no doubt that there was a, a spate of break and enters onto yachts and fishermen's boats over that period, and that night, we've, we can prove two more that night. This girl running with thieves, one of, them, one of the best thieves in Hobart was her boyfriend, and another man, who was also a man of, of, of violence and, and thieving, got on the yacht thinking it was empty, didn't know old Bob was there, he just decided to sleep the night. He woke up, he was bludgeoned to death. The girl told me she left the yacht and she went off on a dinghy and left the two men alone. I've got no doubt in her truthfulness. She wants to unburden herself. I think she's brave to try and do this because the criminal world down there may cause harm to this now young woman in her mid-twenties. Uh, mid I've got great fears for her, Richard, but she tried last week to unburden herself again. She needs help and we'll get the answers from her. Mm. Boy, oh boy, it is a fascinating case. <coughs> Thank you for your time today, so we appreciate it. And Colin's book, Southern Justice, is out now. And for more information about this case, you can head to savesue.com. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us, Colin. Thank you. Thank you.